Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve coin change, lead code number 322. So we are given an integer array coins representing coins of different denominations. And we're also given an integer amount, which is representing a total amount of money. Now we need to return the fewest number of coins that you need to make up that amount. And if that amount of money cannot be made up by any combination of the coins, you can return minus one. So in this example, we have coins is one, two, and five and we're trying to make the amount of 11. Now we have an unlimited number of ones, twos, and fives at our disposal. So there's multiple different ways to make this 11. You know, you could just use ones and you could make 11 ones, that would work. You could use five twos, which would get you to 10, and then you could use another one. So that would actually be a total of six coins. But the smallest way to do this would be, you generally want to use big coins. So two fives and one one is going to take only three coins to make 11. So your answer would be the smallest number of coins we would need, and that's going to be three. Also, in this example, you can see all of our coins are sorted in general. That's actually not guaranteed to be true. However, one of the first things we'll do in our code is to actually sort the numbers. So you can pretty much just assume that it's going to be sorted. Okay, let's suppose we had the coins array of one, four, five. So you have an unlimited number of ones, fours, and fives. And we're trying to make the target amount of, we'll just call it A, is equal to 12. Now, what you might be tempted to think is using a greedy approach. And that would be really nice if this worked, which is that, hey, obviously you wanna use big coins, so you could sort this thing to make sure the coins are increasing. And then if you were to go backwards, you could say, okay, well, I wanna use as many fives as possible. So we'll use five, well, we could use it twice because if you use it twice, you'll get 10. If you were to use it three times, you'd get too much at 15. And then we'll try to use four as many times as we can. Well, that immediately goes to 14, so that's not gonna work. Then to get one here, you could do one times two. So use another two ones, that would equal two. And your total sum here is going to be 12. So that works out really well, uh, except this is not the optimal solution here because this is not the minimum number of coins to make 12. So this approach uses four coins because we're using two fives and we're using two ones, except you can actually do an approach that has three coins. If you just simply ignore the ones and the fives and you you do four times three, so we use four three times, well, that is immediately equal to 12. And so your smallest number of coins possible would be three. So you can't just use a greedy approach. This problem is going to require dynamic programming. Now, the idea is to make an array that is going to have 13 positions. So basically 12 plus one, it's going to be the indices of zero to 12 inclusive. So it's going to start at zero, one, two, all the way up until 12. So zero to 12 inclusive, there's going to be 13 spots here. Now, if you pick an I here in the index, we'll say I is three right now, then generally what the array position is going to be is the minimum number of coins it takes to make that amount. And so we're actually gonna be able to build this bottom up. So starting at our base case of zero, all the way up until our desired amount, because really only what we care about is the minimum number of coins it takes to make 12. But it's kind of necessary to find the minimum number of coins it takes to make all of the previous amounts. And then at the end, we can figure out the minimum number of coins it takes to make that target. Now our base case is what is the minimum number of coins it takes to make zero? Well, you don't need any coins. You can just make zero by having nothing. And so it's zero ways there. And the rest of these positions here, you can really fill that with whatever you want. In the code, we'll probably fill it with zeros. But for now, I'm just gonna kind of pretend there's nothing there. Okay, now what is the minimum number of coins it takes to make one? Well, do we have a one coin? Yes, we actually do. And so we can make one in one. Okay, what is the minimum number of coins it takes to make make two. Well, you're making two via the coins that we have here. So these are our array of coins. And so we need to use coins to make that. However, you don't necessarily have to actually have that coin. You don't have to have a two coin to make it. So for each of these positions here we're looking at, we're going to iterate over our coins array and try to make that amount. So if we use a one, well, we're trying to make two. And so if we're using a coin of one, well, you can kind of think about the difference here is that we're off by one 
here. If you're trying to make two and you're using a coin of one, well, there's still one left over. Can we make one? Can we make this? Yes, we can actually. You can see that the minimum number of coins it takes to make that is one. So you can actually make this two via that coin that we have here, plus the minimum number of coins it takes to make the difference, which is this. So that one plus that one will make two, and that's going to be two different coins it takes to make two. Okay, now we're trying to find the minimum number of coins it takes to make three. Well, we would need a coin to do that. And so if you have a coin of one, well, then we're trying to make three. And so you're using a coin of one. And so what's left over there is two. Are we able to make two? Well, yes, actually you can. And we can make two in the minimum number of ways possible, which is two. Okay, so we know that we can make three via our one coin that we're using here, plus the two different ways we can make the difference. And so we could say that we we can make three in three different ways. Can we make it any better? Well, if we look at the next coin here, we'd see we're trying to make three, we're trying to use a coin of four, and this is going to be negative, okay? And it's just going to get more and more negative. We would break out of our coins array and conclude the smallest number of ways we can make three is via three coins. And that makes sense, right? It's just three ones. Okay, now we are trying to make four. So we'd look at our coin and say, okay, well, we could use a coin of one. And so the difference would be three. We know we can make this three in three different ways. So we could actually make four in three plus one, which is four different ways. But let's keep going here. If you go through your coins, you'd see, oh, actually, well, we're trying to make four and you're using a coin of four, which is a difference of zero. How many coins does it take to make zero? Zero, that's why it's very important to have that base case here. And so we'd say, oh, actually, it just takes that one coin that we're using here to make four. Can we do even better than that? Well, probably not, but let's just confirm. We are trying to make four. We would use a coin of five. That is going to be negative, And so that is not going to work. Okay, now we're trying to make five. So could we use the coin of one? Well, that would have left over a value of four. We know we could make four in one way. So we could actually make five in simply one plus one, which is two different ways. But can we do something better? Well, if we have four, this is kind of just gonna be the reverse here. You're trying to make five. We're using a coin of four. That means that one is left over. We can make one in one way. In kind of the opposite way, you could make five in two. That's not any better. Okay, but when we get over here, you'd see we're trying to make five and you actually have a coin of five. And so we are going to get a difference of zero. So you could actually make five in simply just one coin. And that is definitely the preferred amount. Okay, so you could do this in this bottom up way, which we did here. That's gonna be the fastest solution. We are also going to first code it up in a way where you kind of do a top down. So you're trying to make 12 and using recursion, you could kind of go backwards to hit your base cases. So we'll write both of those solutions. Okay, so we're going to start with our top down DP, aka memoization approach. This is the recursion solution. And we're going to skip over the recursive solution that doesn't use memoization. That would be exponential and would not pass the test cases. The time complexity of this is going to be big O of the number of coins that we have times the amount that we're going to create. And the space complexity is going to be big O of the amount because the recursive call stack is basically starting at the amount and trying to get down to our base case of zero. Okay, so as I said here, the first thing we're going to do is just sort the coins. This sorts them in ascending order. They're now getting bigger and we'll create our memoization table. So memo is a dictionary that has our base case. So for the amount of zero, it doesn't take any coins to do that. Okay, we'll make a recursive function. So we'll define min coins on an amount. And so this is going to give you the smallest number of coins it takes to make some amount. And the reason we're going to use this is like, like this. So we want the result, which is equal to the minimum number of coins we can make on our target amount. So notice here, this is like an abbreviation. It's like for a generic amount, this here, our desired result is the minimum number of coins it takes to get our target amount. Now, this might actually be a result of infinity, which is essentially saying that we cannot make that amount. So if the result is less than infinity, that's just the float of infinity. That means it's an actual number. So we could make it. So you would return the result. Otherwise, that means it basically is infinity. So we couldn't make that target amount. And so you'd have to return just negative one as the question says right there. Okay, so how do we make this function here? 
Well, it's pretty interesting. You would obviously do your base memoization here, which is if the amount is in the memo, then you can just return the memo at the amount for pretty much every single memoization. That's always going to be the same. We never want to do the recursive stuff for this amount if we already know what the minimum number of coins for it is. Okay, otherwise here, we're going to set min equal to the float of infinity, basically saying so far, we're not able to make that amount and it's just the biggest number possible. Now we need to loop through the coins because if we're going to make this amount it's going to be made by adding a coin so for coin in the coins so if we're looking at a particular coin then we can get the difference is equal to the amount we're trying to get here minus our coin so this is saying okay if you're using a coin to try and make the amount that coin will contribute its amount and so what basically what's left over is the difference between the amount we're trying to make minus the coin we're currently using now if the difference is actually less than zero well that would mean basically coin is too big coin would be bigger than the amount and if you're trying to make an amount with a coin that's bigger than it well that's not going to work and this is why we sorted the coins is because since we're looping through the coins the coins are getting bigger so this difference if it is negative it's just going to keep getting more and more negative as we loop through the coins so none of these are going to work so you would actually just end up breaking here okay otherwise here what we would do is set min equal to this is our main recurrence relationship here it's going to be the minimum of itself and one because we're actually using a coin we're saying use a coin so that's that one there plus the minimum number of coins that it takes to make the difference because we're trying to make amount and you need a coin to do that so we'll use that coin see the difference that it takes between making our amount and the amount that our coin contributes so we're using one coin plus the minimum number of coins it takes to make that difference friends. Okay, so after you kind of go through all of the coins here, or if you break early, then you would have min as, as the minimum number of coins it takes to make this amount. And it might still be infinity. If it is infinity, that means you can't make it. And that is actually fine to put in the memo. So memo at the amount is going to be set equal to the min. Again, that could be infinity. If it is, that just means we can't make that amount. Or it might actually be a number saying we could make that amount in the smallest number of ways possible. And then since since we have that, we could just return min or equivalently memo at the amount. Okay, so if I zoom out here, this is all of our code. It's quite a bit. It's a pretty complex function. You'll see it passes our cases there, and it's also going to pass our submission cases. This is an example where you really see or will see the benefits of bottom up dynamic programming. This one passes the test cases, but we're kind of clearly in like this slower hunch over here. So this is our memoization. Let's now switch this to bottom up. Okay, so let's switch this to the bottom up dynamic programming approach. This one's going to be considerably faster because it just uses for loops entirely. So we're still going to sort the numbers, but we're going to remove most of this stuff here, although it's going to be very similar. We'll set the DP, which is going to be the minimum number of coins it takes to make a certain amount. That is going to be the list of zero times. We actually need amount plus one, okay? Because we actually want to include zero as our base case. So index zero would be zero. And we'd also have one up until the amount because it's just every index is going to have the minimum amount of coins it takes to make that amount. Okay, now we need to loop through the stuff that's not our base cases. So that'd be for i in the range of one until the amount plus one. This is over one inclusive up until just amount. And we're trying to set dp at i right now. And we need dp at i to be the minimum number of coins it takes to make i. So the minimum is going to be the float of infinity, just like before. We don't know if we can make it yet, and we're setting it to be the biggest possible. Then for each of the coins in coins, so we'll loop through those, we'll get our difference, which is going to be i because we're trying to make i minus the coin because we're trying to make i via a coin so the difference is going to be the amount it takes to make that minus the coins contribution and again if that difference is less than zero then that is going to keep getting more and more negative as we loop through the coins because they're sorted so we can actually just break early here otherwise we need to set min to be the minimum of itself and the recurrence relation which is dp at this difference plus one. Well, we're trying to make i, and so if you're using that coin, then what's left over is the difference. And so the minimum number of ways it would be to make i is going to be the dp at the difference. So the minimum number of ways we can make the difference plus one for using that extra coin. 
Okay, and we don't know if this is actually the best coin to use, which is why we loop through all of the coins and make sure it's actually set to the minimum. After we've gone through this, we know that it's going to be at its minimum, or again, it still might be stuck at infinity, implying we can't make that amount. We'll set DP at I equal to the minimum. And then after we get out here, it's gonna be that same code as before, just with DP. If DP at the amount, because that's what we're trying to make here. If DP at the amount is less than the float of infinity, that means it's an actual number, we can make it. So we return DP at the amount. And otherwise, that means that that it basically is infinity, it means we can't make it, so we could return minus one like the problem says. So if you run that, that is going to be our fastest solution so far. And we're gonna be basically in the cool kids club over here. Okay, and again, the space is gonna be O of the amount. That's pretty clear. We're making amount many space. And the time is gonna be coins times the amount because we have one for loop here that's going over the amount. And for each of those amounts, we need to loop over all of the coins. So that's pretty explicit. It. Drop a like if this was helpful, guys. I hope it was, and have a great day. Bye-bye.